Lastly, we're going to wrap up this video talking about the NFC East, the home of my Dallas Cowboys. And man, there's one team in this division that I think can either be the best team in football or it's going to be the worst team in football. No in between. But we're going to start off with the Washington Deadskins. I mean, Redskins. I'm sorry, all you Washington fans that watch our videos. Um, <laughs> uh, so the Washington Redskins. RG3 concuss. They're going to go with Kirk Cousins. Alfred Morris, Deshaun Jackson, Pierre Garçon. On paper, they actually have a pretty decent offense, but the quarterback, we don't know. Defense that lost Brian Arakbo. Um, I think D'Angelo Hall is coming off an injury. They did pick up Chris Culliver from the uh, 49ers, so that's a great pickup. You got Ryan Kerrigan as a main man. They got Terrence Knight, Tim to full up the middle. So they, they actually have a decent team on paper. It's just coming together. And of course, this is the second year for Jay Gruden. So will he be able to will he be able to get production out of the quarterback? That's what the Redskins have really just missed all the season since Doug Williams came and won them a Super Bowl. They need they need consistency at the quarterback. You know, RG3 did it his rookie year, but then he got injured and then went on from there. I think it's just time for the Redskins to cut ties with RG3, trade him for something or cut him and just eat the cap hit but you know it's just time to get him out that locker room it's apparent that nobody i don't want to say nobody but that it's apparent that there's a portion of the locker room that doesn't like him his coach doesn't like him and the only reason that he's playing them is because dan snyder invested so much in rg3 he has to you know play him or at least try to get some sort of value out of him but I got the Redskins finishing maybe 3-13 and 13 again. They'll be bottom of a barrel, one of the worst teams in the NFL. Uh, next team, New York Giants. New York Giants. Odell Beckham Jr., Madden cover boy, had about 1,200 yards in 12 games last season. I give him it. Oh, 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 Odell Beckham's a very good wide receiver. Victor Cruz is coming back after t after an uh, injury from last year. Uh, Lonnie Donnell, very good tight end who had a breakout had a breakout year last year for a lot of good fantasy owners. Um, they bring it back Rashad Jennings, who's a starting running back. They got Shane Vereen from the Patriots to come back as like a scat back, third down back receiver type form uh, thing for Eli Manning um, on defense. JPP blew his finger off in the firecracker accident we don't even know if he's gonna play this year they still got john beeson up the middle they still got uh dominique rogers cormarty at the corner and prince amukamora if i said that name right <laughs> so they, they still got some pretty good young corners you know very decent defense uh they still need some help at the safety position and maybe a defensive tackle but the giants are always one of those teams like you never know what you're gonna get you never know if you're gonna get 30 touchdown, 12 interception Eli Manning, or if you're going to get 25 touchdown, 15 interception Eli Manning. You know, that, that's just kind of the gamble that they that you get with the man, with the Eli Manning. Um, I think I think the Giants have a small, slim chance of being a wild card in this division um, or making the playoffs as a wild card at 9-7, and seven, maybe even 8-8. Eight and eight. Um, That's if the other team, which I'm about to get into now, the Philadelphia Eagles, will do good or do bad. I feel like the Eagles, because what, what I didn't understand about this, Chip Kelly already had Darren Sproles, so he signs Ryan Matthews. Cool. Then he signs DeMarco Murray, so you have three running backs that could be starters on other teams. Ryan Matthews is a starting running back in this league. He could start for a number of teams. Um, Patriots, Raiders, um, Colts. I think he would start over Frank Gore. He's just injury prone. Darren Sproles, for a short time, did start in San Diego. He did start in uh, New Orleans with the Saints. Now he's with the Eagles. He's a third down scat bat wide receiver. You know, get him in open field. Let him make some moves. Kick returner. That's fine. I didn't see the need of signing DeMarco Murray. Um, just for the simple fact is like, all right, you have these three running backs. What are you going to do with them? You know? You, you, are you going to come out in like the old school Maryland eye formation to have all three of them line up? You're going to come out in the in the wishbone formation and run the ball like that. So I, I don't understand Chip Kelly's thinking that, you know, they, they lost Jeremy Macklin to the Chiefs. Um, Zach Ertz is their starting tight end. They drafted that uh, one wide receiver who they're hoping for big things from. And then on defense, you know, they lose Kerry Williams. They did sign Byron Maxwell. Um, they got uh alonzo from i mean alfonso from the uh from the bills for shady mccoy the trade away shady mccoy still got riley cooper so I, I don't know i don't know what to expect from the eagles i mean in the preseason you know they've been they put up 40 points twice that's cool but they're also one of those teams like okay we know you can score we know you got this high tempo offense will you be able to stop anybody that's going to be the question 
Because it's cool if you can score points in two minutes, but you got to remember, you're going to have your defense out there for a long time. Will your defense be able to keep up? Like, you know, this is NFL. This isn't college. You know, the, the offenses in the NFL are a lot more complex and, you know, able to do better stuff than they are in college. So, I don't know. that that's So, that's why I say the Eagles have the chance to, like, maybe be the top of the NFC or maybe be the bottom. All honesty, I don't think it's going to work for Kelly because people have had a year to see his offense, to see how it works, to see how to stop it. And it's like with any new gimmick that comes in the NFL, you know, you had the read option come out, you know, the past couple of years. At first, people couldn't stop it. And then RG3 breaks his knee. And now the NFL knows how to stop it. Like the Wildcat years ago when the Dolphins would run it with Ronnie Brown, when he would come out and they would literally just run the Wildcat down the field. People didn't know how to stop it. They got a year's worth of footage on it. Bam. Now you rarely see anybody run the Wildcat in the NFL. So I think Chip, Chip Kelly's offense is one of those gimmicks where it's like, all right, he did well last year, but people have had a year to watch film on it, get an idea of what he's going to do. I don't think it's going to be that effective. I see the Eagles maybe being 5-11, and 6-10 and 10 at best. I, I, I don't think that they're going to be able to stop people. And I think that at a certain point in this season that – their offense isn't going to be as high powered as it was last season. But going on to the team that I think will win this division, Dallas Cowboys. I'm a homer. Go ahead and say it. Yeah, my Dallas Cowboys will win this division. Of course, you got Romo coming back, and this is the first offseason in the last couple of years that Romo was actually healthy. He doesn't have to worry about his back as much, so he can do full, more things than he could last year. Des Bryant, they got the contract. He signed up for the next five years, so he'll come in the uh, training camp happy. Terrence Williams, they, we did lose DeMarco, but I'm under the incentive that, yes, DeMarco Murray is a great running back, but... I honestly feel like that offensive line was maybe 60, 50 to 60 percent of why DeMarco Murray was so great. Like if you notice before we drafted Frederick and Zach Martin, DeMarco Murray was OK as a runner. You know, he actually had a healthy season because it was a contract year. So, of course, he's going to have a healthy season playing through injuries. Um, so he was healthy and then he didn't he, he fumbled a little bit, but not as much as he used to. But yeah, before we drafted Frederick and Martin, like DeMarco Murray was okay. He wasn't great. So I don't think he'll do that well in Philadelphia because Philadelphia isn't, I don't think Philadelphia is a running style team like Dallas. When they do run the ball, it's mainly at a like shotgun. They don't really do that many under center sets. So Dallas, we got Joseph Randall and Derek McFadden. Uh, we did just trade for Christian Michelle. Christian Michael. I don't know why I said Christian Michelle. Christian Michael from the Seahawks, who was more of like a scat back. I, I'm not, I'm confident, but I'm not that confident in our run game. I feel like that if McFadden, if McFadden can stay healthy, I feel like he can be 1,000, 1,200 yard rusher. Reason I say that is because he has the build. Like he's 6'2, 215. He's a fast running back. He's like a fast running back in a power back's body. He just has to worry about his carry, make sure he stays hold, hold on to the ball and stay healthy. Joseph Randall, I don't know. I don't know if he'll even be on the team by the end of the season. You know, if, if the Cowboys had that much faith in Joseph Randall, then he probably would have had the starting job by now. But I don't know what they're going to do with him. And then on defense, of course, we lost Orlando Skandrick for the year with the MCL and ACL injury injury. So it puts so much fear in my heart that our two starting cornerbacks are going to be Mo Claiborne and, Br and Brandon Carr again. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we did get Byron Jones. I don't know if they're going to try to play him at a nickel position or maybe start him at safety. We're getting Sean Lee back. We're moving him to outside linebacker. Of course, we drafted Randy Gregory. We signed uh, Greg Hardy, who we'll get uh, starting week five. You know, the defense line is looking nice. Defense line is looking real nice. We'll get Rolando McClain back after his suspension. Uh, Anthony Hitchens is coming back after an amazing rookie season last year. So I, I have very good faith in the Cowboys. Their defense is going to be a lot better than last year. Of course, they lost to Marco. They may not be as effective in the run game, but I mean, you saw the year before last, even when we didn't really have a run game and Tony Romo still threw for a lot of yards and we can still move the ball. So our offense, I'm not worried about. I'm just worried about our secondary. I'm worried about people throwing the ball on us. I'm worried about putting Brandon Carr on Odell Beckham Jr. or Mo Clay born on Odell Beckham Jr. or uh, 
Mo Claiborne or Randall Cobb whenever we play the Packers. That's what I'm worried about. So if, if our defense can stop people, if we can get turnovers, if we can have an okay secondary, Cowboys will win this division easily. I think they'll probably win it maybe 11 and five, maybe 10 and six, hopefully 12 and four again, but I don't think they'll be that good, but they'll probably win this division as a 12 and six. So that's why I think it's gonna win the NFC East. So to come out of the NFC to represent them in the Super Bowl, I'm going to have to go with the Seahawks. The Seahawks are going to three-peat and go into the Super Bowl. Um, I, I don't really know what other team, as of now, I can say that can maybe stand up to the Seahawks defensively and offensively. Um, they just have too much firepower. Like I said, they get Cam Chancellor back. They'll have that. Earl Thomas, Richard Sherman, um, great front seven. You know, Marshawn Lynch is back. Uh, they just signed Fred Jackson to be his backup off the free agent waiver. You know, still don't really necessarily have a number one receiver, but Jimmy, giving Russell Wilson Jimmy Graham is going to do so much amazing stuff for him. You know, you'll you, Russell Wilson's Jimmy Graham's going to be Wilson's number one target in the red zone and probably just an offense in general. But that is my predictions for the NFC for this NFL season. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the AFC videos my co-host Brian Greer did um, on our channel. He went through the AFC West, East, North, and South and gave his predictions of who's going to win that. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm Mike Titan, and I will catch you guys in the next episode of The Blitz. Peace.